Okay, we're gonna start off with something simple. How to pour triptychase soy agar plates. We have our triptychase soy broth. We have our agar, we got our whey boats. Now we need to get a media bottle. <clears throat> we'll make half a liter. This should pour about a rack of plates. So in order to do this, tear your whey boat. TSA requires 30 grams per liter. So we're gonna measure out 15 grams here. So there's a lot of small things that happen in the lab that you slowly pick up over time. Um, if I put this directly into the media bottle, what will happen is when I put the water in, this will just stay dry and caked on the bottom. And then it's a pain to get off the bottom. And if you don't mix it before you put it in the autoclave, it will just burn the powder. So we'll start off by putting in about half volume of deionized water. Then we will put in the broth. Yes, it makes chunks, but they're not dry and stuck to the bottom, so when it autoclaves, it won't actually burn. For agar, it's 1.5% uh, in normal agar which is 15 grams per liter so we use seven and a half grams for half a liter right on the dot baby professional I have made probably thousands and thousands of liters. Sometimes if I have patience, I'll put a stir bar in and I'll preheat and pre-mix this, but I've never had an issue before. Just going directly into the autoclave. Another little trick is, if you write directly on the media bottle, you have to wash it off with acetone after, it's kind of pain. If you put tape directly on, tape has a hard time coming off after it gets cooked on the autoclave. So if you just fold one edge of the tape over to make this little non-stick side, then whenever you want to remove the label, you can just quickly pull this off and everything works out pretty well. So we'll top this up to 500 mils, which is this first bevel here on these media bottles. And generally I go a tiny bit over it because there will be a little boil over in normal autoclave runs. So we got TSA. One thing you want to make sure when you autoclave is that you never autoclave a closed vessel. So this will turn a little bit loosen up and then to show that it's autoclaved and also keep the tube from popping off put some autoclave tape on there this is an old school autoclave and it works awesome so we fill this with water this is an old Tuttenauer 2540M for manual we wait until the water comes out to this bevel here This will fill the chamber with the water that will turn into steam. We'll stop this. We'll check the reservoir. That could use some water. 
put this in a container that doesn't have holes in it because whenever you make agar there is boil over and if you use something with holes then you get molten agar inside your system it gets in the tubing it can plug it up it can just really gum up and mess up an autoclave so we'll close this this is set to autoclave we'll set the timer to 45 minutes we'll hit start we reset the pressure gauge and just to do the right thing we're gonna fill up some water and put this into the reservoir so you want it to come up just Underneath the safety gauge, that's fine for this run. Come back in 45 minutes and it'll be done. GoPro, stop recording. Hold on one second. So once the autoclave is done, it's reached one bar, uh, 15 PSI for 15 minutes. We exhaust it. Just let some of the excess steam out. There's still gonna be some in the chamber. So it's pretty hot and boiling over there. So this is why it's also good to uh, let it cool down naturally and not force, because it's super boiled right now. So any disturbances will cause that to boil over and that's where you can get hurt. So we're just gonna leave this alone. GoPro, stop recording. After it's cooled a bit. Put it in a 50 degree water bath. so the agar so it doesn't solidify like that. GoPro stop recording. All right, now that it's time to pour the plates, if you have a biosafety cabinet or laminar flow cabinet, you can pour the plates in there. We do, but I'm just doing the down and dirty quick plates. I've never had problems with contamination. Just sterilize your area with 70% isopropyl alcohol. If you have a flame, you can also work under a flame to create a little area of upward air draft. I, again, have never found that I've needed that. We've run tests where we just pour this traditional easy way and we've never had contamination issues. Check to make sure that your Petri plates aren't broken. I generally like to break them into piles of five so there's 25 plates here but we only have um, <clears throat> sorry 25 plates but there's 24 so give the TSA give it a little stir to mix up the agar you want to try to not shake the crap out of it so that it produces a lot of bubbles, but if there are bubbles, you can get rid of them pretty easily with a flame. You want to try to not talk when you're pouring plates, just for general sterility, but... Doing them in this stack method is generally easy. If they don't cover, you can give them a little swirl. Next. Generally try to pour until you cover the bottom of the plate, but sometimes you'll end up a little short. You can kind of guesstimate how much you have left. 
and with practice you'll end up being able to generally perfectly pour a stack without being short and without going over. feeling I'm going to be under Not too bad A couple short plates, a couple of too much but that's it, let them cool, invert them, wrap up a paper towel that's dry, put them back in the bag, and you will have a rack of sterile agar to run your experiments with. And then generally while the um, bottle is still warm, this is the best time to rinse out the agar, otherwise it gets stuck in the bottom and it's kind of a pain to clean out. Then our nifty little tab that we left, easy, done, GoPro stop recording.